The American dream can look like a nightmare at times, but thanks to the creative mind and spirit, we have artists who help us get through the day with their creativity. Can art save your life? You bet it can. In the car, you turn on music. At home, you watch TV and read books. When out on the town, you have dinner and a show. Artists create so we can escape the daily madness. Poetry is the lifeline as we host Grammy Award winning recording artist, poet, author, voiceover specialist, photographer, and film narrator, Jay Ivey is on Counterpoint with Gerard McClendon. Thank you for joining us on Counterpoint. Hey, give me a call at 844-777-9311. Tweet me at Gerard MC and send Facebook comments to Counterpoint Gerard. He's worked with and toured with Prince, Tari Torre, Jay-Z, Comet, Kanye West, and so many others. Joining me at the Counterpoint, Grammy Award winning recording artist, poet, author, voice specialist, and just a beautiful human being, Mr. J. Ivy. Hey, let's listen to some of his work. I'm going to pitch to one of your wonderful poems, and I believe it is I Need to Write. Uh, like that one. My pops died, and it's hard dealing with it. I need to write. I know y'all can't wait for the book. I need to write. They done stole my hoopty. I need to write. My little brother got mugged by some grown thug. I need to write. I ain't got it no more. I need to write. My ex tried to give him a boy. I need to write. The weatherman acting awfully funny. I need to write. It's time to take Jesus off the cross. I need to write. Cops killing brothers. Cops killing sisters. Free more Mia. I need to write. Also, oh, I'm gay because I don't want to get with you. I need to write. They just take good care of little cute boy. What about the shorties in the projects? I need to write. You saying I'm bogus because I didn't come to your event because I was tired. I need to write. I distinctly remember asking for six wings of mouse off. Why is it I only have four? I need to write. I think about writing in third person when the first is hurting. Life is a job and the verse is working. My soul's rehearsing for when the good Lord pulls the curtain. Words are words, so maybe it's your actions that's doing the cursing. I said, I think about writing in third person when the verse is hurting. Life is a job. And the verse is working. My soul's rehearsing. But when the good Lord pulls the curtain, words are words. So maybe it's your actions that's doing the cursing. I need to write. That's I need to write. Poet J. Ivy. Jay Ivy, man, welcome to the Counterpoint. Yeah. I really appreciate you being here. First of all, man, I need to write. Where did that poem come from, man? Man, well, well, first off, it's good to be here. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Always great seeing you. And I need to write. It was that was that was a um, what you call a mad morning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you mean by I, that? I just woke up. You were upset. And I, I was I was a little I was a little upset. Yeah. I was just you know it was all of the weights of the world just felt like they were just on top of me. And I said, well, let me write myself out of this and let me just get it out and vent. Yeah. So I went out to the lake, uh, out on the point. I yeah. went out on the point in that field, uh, uh, promontory point, and I just walked around the circle with my notepad for about 10 minutes and I just wrote this poem. Just whatever came out, I just wrote it. Yeah. 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 It's it's a catharsis of sorts, you know, yeah. and every time I listen to it, I get something different out of it, hmm. you know, and I, I see that with a lot of your, a lot of your poetry, it harkens back to some of the classical poets, hmm. you know, some of your internal rhyme, some of yeah. your in rhyme, uh, your uh, analogy and metaphor is just out of this world. We'll hmm. get to that a little bit later. How did you get the name Jay Ivey, man? You know, so, man, Jay Ivey is, <laughs> is just an abbreviation of who I am. My, my full name is James Ivey Richardson the second, yeah. I was named after my father, and when I started performing, I decided to shorten it to, uh, actually I was doing a radio show, mm -hmm. and I was, and um, the guy I was doing a show with, he was like, your name is too long, because I was using my full name, and I hated Ivy, for a while I hated Ivy, because I thought it was a girl's name, mm -hmm. you know, my mother was like, you should use Ivy, all great poets have a pen name, yeah. and I was like, oh wow, okay, so I'll use my middle name, so I started using my full name, did the radio show, he's like, your name's too long, so I shortened it to James Ivy, yeah. and then one day I was like, Jay Ivy, 
And it's I a hot like, name. I was like, I like that. And it's, and, and it's, and it's very masculine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was like, yeah. I was like, you the Jay give it the little the strength, that? you know. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about bio, man. Uh, mm -hmm. Elementary school, man. Where'd you go? I went to Foster Park, and then I went to Emmanuel Christian School. High school, where'd you go? I went to Rich Central. So I transferred in the middle of my eighth grade year. I transferred from Emmanuel to Hoof out in Matson, Illinois, yeah. so I ended up going to Rich Central in Olympia Fields. So a South Suburbanite South here. Sub, this baby. This is all good. And then you yeah. go to college where? I went to Illinois State. You, you went to Illinois State? I stayed Red Birds. Uh, normal? Normal. No, abnormal. Yeah. Dude, you, cut, you cut that out. You cut that out. So, abnormal. <laughs> so, so, Jay, man, you know, your reputation precedes you. Uh, and before we get into some of your accolades, man, why poetry as a medium? Uh, I know that you're in the photography and a few other art forms, mm -hmm. but why did you choose poetry or did it choose you? Poetry definitely chose me. It was something I didn't know was there. Uh, my junior year of high school at Rich Central, I had a teacher named Ms. Argue, and what I learned is you're not going to argue with somebody named Ms. Argue. Mm -hmm. And she, she had us. Because you'll lose the argument. <laughs> you're going to lose. You're going to lose. <laughs> so she had us write a poem for a homework assignment, and I wasn't into poetry, wasn't into writing. I was good at writing notes to girls, but I didn't look at that as a gift, you know. Yeah. I just looked at that as, okay, if I needed to say something, I knew I could say it, but still, not a gift. Yeah. And um, wrote the poem, came to class the next day she surprises everyone and she's like okay everybody I want you to read your poem in front of the class I didn't want to write it so I definitely didn't want to read it so it was my turn I rushed through it at the class she pulled me to the side and she gave me an A on the, the poem and I was like and I wouldn't get too many A's no any A's at the right. time and um, she said look you have a nice speaking voice I have a show coming up I want to put you on the show and I was real shy so I didn't do the show a few weeks go by she had another show come up and she said you know what Last time I asked you to do a show, you faked me out. This time I'm not asking you. You have to do it. Mm -hmm. So she makes me do the show. My first time ever on stage, as scared and nervous as I was, I got a standing ovation. Oh. And I just, immediately my life changed forever. I just, I fell in love with, uh, with realizing I had a voice, mm -hmm. with realizing that, that people would actually listen to, to my story. Mm -hmm. and, and, um, and, it was just, and it was fun. It was just something fun about speaking and, and releasing. You know? So this teacher saw that, had insight. Yeah, absolutely. You got bit by the bug of poetry, yeah. and when you so got that standing ovation, man, it's nothing like that crowd roaring, oh, is it? Nothing like it. Best nothing feeling like in the it. world. And it was so surprising. I, it was so unexpected. You know, you, I didn't have any expectations. You know, my, my only thing I was thinking in the moment was don't forget yeah. your, your lines. Right. <laughs> That's all. I, so I wasn't thinking past that. I wasn't thinking, Oh, will they clap? Well, and then to see them stand up, it was it was yeah. amazing. J. Ivy Richardson the second. Mm -hmm. What's the purpose of poetry, man? What's the what, purpose? You know, so we know that film has a purpose in mm -hmm. that it's visual and it's sonic. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we know that sculpture has a purpose in mm -hmm. that it's visual. So are paintings. What's the purpose of poetry for you? For me, I feel that poetry it taps into the emotion of what it is to be human. Huh. Um, it taps into, uh, it taps into our, our experience. It, it carries the stories and our, and our history forward to, to generations to come. It inspires those that you, you have an opportunity to speak to. Huh. And it, um, it, it just, it lifts, it just lifts your spirit, you know, it's a way to communicate and, and add perspective to a uh, situation mm. that people might not otherwise see or, or take from. So for me, it's, it's just always been, um, it's, it's just always been something that just really touched me, you know, and, and lift me up. So one of your lines is you said that you dream in mm. color. I, I too dream in color and in rhyme. Is, is that for real? <laughs> yeah, While you're I, asleep, yeah. knocked out, head on the pillow, yeah. J. Ivy. Your dreams are in color. And not not look, all of them, but, but yeah. But let me I've, ask I've you had, this. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Uh -huh. Here's the text. <laughs> Do you sometimes, are you sometimes asleep and you will develop rhymes while uh, yeah. you? No. Yeah. No, no, let me, but let me tell Break you. Break it down. I'll have these dreams in color <laughs> and I'll hear poetry. I'll, I'll recite poetry in my dreams and I wake up and I try to remember what I, you know, and it's, it's just, it escapes me too fast, but I've had full out, you know, I've had some ideas do come across, some yeah. ideas I do remember and I get them down, 
um, as best as possible. One, actually one of the songs, or there's a little piece in my book where I had this dream um, when me and my father, we had reconnected and he, we were in this, this, uh, this um, it was like a studio, uh, a radio station. And um, he, he was playing the records. My father, growing up, he was a DJ. And here we were, he was playing the records and he started singing this song and I woke up and I was half asleep and, and half waking up and I, I just started jotting it down. And well, I, I remember I grabbed my, my phone and I recorded the voice memo because it was mm. a song he was singing. <laughs> so I started recording the song that he was singing. And um, that was an instance where I was able to, to you know, get it to reality. Wow, this, this is powerful because it, it, they say you don't truly know a foreign language mm. until you start dreaming in that language. Mm. Uh, they say you don't truly know mm. how to play guitar well and start, mm. until you start hearing riffs while you're asleep. Mm. Uh, it's good to know that Jay Ivey gets poetry and rhyme while he sleep. Thank God you write this down and give it to the world, man. Before we go to break, though, who are some of the heavyweights you've written for besides yourself? Uh, so I've written for Kanye, Kanye West, Jay-Z, John Legend, Tari Ture. Who's uh, Tari Ture? Tari Ture, that's, she's the coldest singer on earth. She is? Yeah, she's my it, wife, too. You, <laughs> that always helps, doesn't it? Yeah, but she cold. She's worked with, I mean, some of the greats from Kanye to John. Legend to Talib Kweli, Slick Rick, yeah. um, and I, I've been able to to work in some of those circles and and write for some incredible people, Deepak Chopra, yeah. uh, Michael Jordan. Um, Do you consider that a blessing? I mean, absolutely. how does a poet from the South suburbs end up worldwide doing poetry for these platinum artists? It, I mean, it it amazes me. I, I get the opportunity, like I, I do. Uh, voiceover work, but I'll do on-camera work, like say for the Spelling Bee, like I did the intro for National Spelling Bee on ESPN and, and other, you know, like the Muhammad Ali documentary, I had the opportunity to narrate and, and write for that. And um, every opportunity is just, it's like, I, I had that moment where I look around and just say, wow, and thank you. You know, yeah. it's, it's a blessing and I'm always amazed to see how far poetry has taken me and, and always reminds me of the potential of where it, where I could go, where it could go. Yeah, you're passionate, man. Thank you, you ever since, you know, the, the first time I met you, I said, it's something different about that mm. guy mm. that they call Jay Ivey. Thank you. you love words, and we're yeah. gonna talk about that in the next, you love rhyme, yeah. you love poetry. You know, when I see you on stage, it's, it's almost like you're a, you're a, a, a predator, man. <laughs> Yeah. Prowling the stage, you know, we're gonna talk about that in yeah. a minute. You know what? Has a song, poem, movie, or a book ever helped you to escape the stress of life? Here are a few of your Facebook comments. Crystalline Charity says, My favorite poem, Gerard, is Mother to Son by Langston Hughes, and my favorite play is Raisin in the Sun by Lorraine Hansberry. Kimberly Bradford says, My favorite song is Love Serenade by Ramsey Lewis, great piano player. Tracy Jablonski says, one of my favorites is the poem called The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost. And Sheila Bradley Smith says, I enjoy the poem If by Rudyard Kipling. Love that poem. Voice your concerns and weed the people. Call and leave me a message at 844-777-9311. Hey, tweet me at Gerard MC and send Facebook comments to Counterpoint Gerard. We'll be back shortly. Tweet me, post on Instagram, or send me a message on Facebook. Let's start the conversation. Your voice is important on CounterPoint. This ain't my house. How does Santa Claus find me? But the little boy in me still wants his daddy badly. I feel like a scared little boy afraid to become a man, but I think I'm ready. I wonder if you know that your baby boy in the show that aired for millions to see on HBO and that hard-ass New York crowd that I didn't even know actually gave me a standing no. I wonder if you know. I know you're proud, because I'm going to be the best, just like you want to be. Watch and see. And just in case you can't, I'm going to scream it so loud that I shake the clouds and move them out the way of my sunshine, because that's what you are, Dad. James, I be 
riches and seed. Do you hear me? You are my sunshine. That's why I forgave you. Because my love for you is still the same. It may have gone through a transformation, but it never really changed. So I swear on my mama and on my name, I'm going to stop this rain, conquer this pain, make sure that you do not die in vain. And when I get to heaven, when I get to heaven, I'm going to jump in your arms. We going to kick back like when I was little and watch the Bears game. I love you, Bears. Woo, that's powerful stuff. That's Dear Father. That's Jay Ivey. Welcome back to Counterpoint. Poet, author, renaissance man, Jay Ivey. He joins us to discuss the power and influence of art and the creative process. Mm. Jay Ivey, man, thank you for thank you, staying man. for a second round yes, of Counterpoint, sir. brother. You know, Dear Father, mm -hmm. um, that was on Deaf Poetry Deaf po Jam. Russell. The crowd mm -hmm. was loving you. Yeah. You had the, the you had the majestic <laughs> braids going. I yeah. see you've got a haircut since yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. You know, what was that moment like, man? Uh, oh, the moment, man. and then let's talk about the poem. So the moment, the moment was surreal. That that was my second time on Deaf Poetry, which was on HBO. And for me, the first the first season I went on, I was filled with a lot of nervousness and just anxious and yeah. scared and all that. So the second time I was I was comfortable and and um and I knew what I was there to perform so I was very confident in the piece and I had my my lady she was sitting front row my mother was there um wow. and you know I had you know she flew in from Chicago to New York for the taping and it was it was uh it was very emotional and and Oh man, it was just surreal. It was yeah. surreal, you know? and, and, and for for uh, for your wife to be there, mm -hmm. uh, Tari Ture, yeah. your mom to be there, and the poem is "Dear Father." Dear Father. We have yeah. so much literature and poems and mm -hmm. movies and mm -hmm. art on mm -hmm. "Dear Mother," "Dear mm -hmm. Mama," yeah. the Tupac. Very little on fathers. Talk mm -hmm. to us, man, about that poem. Talk to me about your relationship with. James Ivy hmm. Richardson, the first. The first, yeah. So my father, he was he was a radio DJ. Oh, he was he was amazing. W L T H and W V O N. Yeah, Jim Richards is what he went by. So I grew up listening to my father on the radio. So before I would walk to, you know, Foster Park or Emmanuel, I would listen to my father on the radio, and hmm. he was uh, he was there until I was about twelve, thirteen. And, you know, drugs and alcohol became a factor. My folks ended up getting a divorce. Mm -hmm. And I didn't see or hear from my father for 10 years. So during that time, you know, now I'm a young man and I was looking, I'm fine, looking mm -hmm. for myself, trying to find myself. And during that time, a lot of frustration I built because the person I felt should have been there for that guidance, he wasn't there. And I remember having a discussion with my cousin Julia, who said, you have to learn how to forgive. She said, if you don't learn how to forgive, you go carry that pain with you for the rest of your life. And mm -hmm. that was something I didn't want to do. So I always had that, you know, uh, in the back of my mind, forgive, mm -hmm. forgive. So one day I decided to forgive my father. And two weeks later, out of the blue, he called me up. And we reconnected. And, um, and it, it, I mean, it was, just, it was powerful. It was emotional. And it was, it was just, uh, it was a lot of joy. I felt a lot yeah. of joy in that moment, just being able to, just look at him, tell him I love him, I miss you, Dad. You know, give him yeah. a hug. And we sat down, we watched the Bears game. Wow. The Bears just happened to be on that day, you know. So um, we reconnected a year and a half later, he passed away. So mm. now, going through this roller coaster of emotions. And um, fast forward, I, I was in New York, and my mother called me up one day. She said, what's going on? She said, you know, you haven't been talking to me. You haven't been talking to Tari. I know something's going on, what's happening? And um, I told her how I was feeling since my father had passed. Mm. And when I finished, you know, I was just telling her, you know, how the anger and the guilt and this and that. And my mom, she listened and she's lit into me. She said, look, your father was a good man. Let him rest in peace. And when she said it, you know, one, it made me think, okay, if anyone had the right to say anything negative about him, it would have been her because she'd been through the most with him. And then at the end of the day, I did know he was a good man. He'd just gone through a lot you know, in his childhood, and he didn't know how to cope with those things yes. in his adulthood. And um, it led to unfortunate circumstances. Right. But uh, so it was in that moment, just hearing her 
hearing my cousin say, you know, learn, I forgive. Hearing Tari, who once told me you have to break the cycle, she was the one who said you have to break the cycle, yes. you know, and it was a cycle that was being passed down generation to generation. You can't so. love yourself or others if you don't forgive either. Right, You've got to exactly. let it go. You have to. You know, uh, Will Smith had a great song where he said, you know, because hate in your heart will consume you too. Mm -hmm. It and, will. And that's that's exactly what happened. It will. The minute you release it, it's all good. It will. So you pen the book, Dear Father. Yeah. What's this book about? Is it about that metamorphosis and that psych cycle that you went yeah. through to get to the forgiveness and love for your dad? Yeah, it's, it's, it's exactly that. It's, it's leading, the, the book is the story leading up to me writing this poem mm -hmm. and and the healing that I, that I received from it. Because I mean, like I said, I was just heavy. I was just, just you know, just really just down. And, and when I wrote this poem, I mean, it were tears on the page when I wrote it. But as soon as I wrote it, I just felt this, this weight just release. And I just, I felt like I could breathe, you it know. It was good that you did that, Jay, because if you didn't, it would have been harder to look at photographs of your dad. Yeah. You got the same eyes. Yeah. You got the nose, man. Yeah. And, like, and, yeah. and, and, and yeah. in the poem, you talk about that. Yeah. What was the line about not getting able to get you off of my face? Uh, yeah, I, um, uh, I try to get you off my mind, but I can't get you off of my face. I see you every time I see me. Mm. I can't do nothing to ask God to bless me. Expand yeah. my territory. Place his hands on me. Keep evil far away from me. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, because, because once our loved ones die, they become mm -hmm. ancestors. Yeah, absolutely. Okay? And and we still and the, the beauty of this book, man, brother, mm -hmm. brother. The beauty mm -hmm. of this book is when someone dies, mm -hmm. you keep saying their name. Yeah. That's how you keep them alive. Yeah. That's what you've done with this book. Yeah. That's what you've done with that poem, man. I really appreciate yeah, that. I just appreciate just that. for my own situation. Thank hey, we're going to shift gears, man. Mm -hmm. The rumor is out uh -huh. that you gave the great John <laughs> Roger Stevens. People don't even know who that is. John yeah. Roger Stevens. John Roger Stevens, right. They, they, John Legend. John the rumor Legend. is that you gave John Legend his name. Yeah. Is that true? That's true. Come That's on, true. man. So the story goes. That's so here. there I was. <laughs> <laughs> what had happened what was. What happened was. <laughs> so, um, well, it was, a, it was a story leading up to the story, mm -hmm. but I got the call about being on the song with Kanye and Jay-Z um, on the song Never Let Me Down on the college dropout. So I go out, I fly out to L.A. from New York and get to the studio. I record my verse. I'm just just blown away and mind you this is this this time is really shortly after i i went through this metamorphosis yes. with dear father i I just written dear father it's a couple months later so i'm feeling on top of the world i'm mm. feeling real good so i record this song and then um we listened to the song just over and over and we just kept listening to it kept listening to it so then some time goes by and kind of was like have you heard of this singer named john stevens i was like yeah i've been hearing about him in new york he was like man let me play you this song so he plays this song song was amazing. I mean, it was just soulful. It was just refreshing. It, it was just, I mean, the song was, just, it was, it just felt great. Yeah. So an hour later, uh, John Stevens comes in the studio. I said, what's up, man? I'm J.I. Ivy Port from Chicago. I boring name, music, John you know? Stevens. Yeah, that's John boring. Stevens. That's, 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 that's how I knew him. He was John Stevens. I said, man, I heard your music. I said, it's amazing. I was like, it sound like that music from the old school. I was like, it sound like that music my folks would listen to. I was like, dog. I was like, you sound like one of the legends. I was like, you a legend, you a legend. I said, matter of fact, that's what I'm gonna call you from now on. I'm gonna call you the legend. So I started calling him John the legend, John the legend, John the legend. So a couple days later, we, we're still in the studio, we're in the lounge, we're at a record plant in Hollywood. And about 10, 12 of us in there, uh, Kanye, Tari was there, Cootie, a couple of other folk, in walks John Stevens, and everybody shouting him out, oh, John Stevens in the building, John Stevens in the house, John Stevens. I was like, John legend. Oh. <laughs> And everybody looked at me, they looked back at him, they was like, oh man, that's your new name. Kanye was the main one. That's your new name from now on. You John Legend. John from now Legend. On. That's, so that's how he got the name. And, and see, Legend. that's how creativity works. It doesn't. Yeah. You, you know, and, and, yeah. and when you when you spit that lyric, man, you got that Grammy for yeah. that college dropout. Yeah. You know? And I got out of the way, because if I wouldn't have got out of my own way, that moment would have never happened. Like yeah. he would still be John Stevens if I wasn't present in that moment. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. We, we're going to be closing shortly, man. The power of work ethic. Mm -hmm. To tell the young poets out there what they need to do when it comes to grinding, man. Oh, man, you need to you need to write, 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 write. You need to you need to practice when somebody you, you're going to meet people and 
in different spaces and time, and you tell them you're a poet, and oh, let me hear something. You gotta, boom. Yeah. You know, you have to, you you have to be able to show them what it is you do. You know, you need to be able to get around and, and move around different cities, and you know, because like I said, closed mouth don't get fed. So right. you can say all day what it is you do, but you need to show people. So yeah. you know, it's it's constantly going after it. It's constantly like really believing in yourself, seeing where you want to go and yeah. working towards it every single day, not listening to the naysayers, not listening to your own doubts and fears that creep mm. in. And, and it's just, it's just nonstop. It's just never giving up. You know, mm. and a lot of us, you know, life, life, life is hard, you know, so things happen to us and, and we shift away from our dreams and yeah. from our purpose, you know, but the way I looked at it was I didn't want to be 70, 80, 90 years old, yes. looking back on life, 100, God willing, looking back on life, like, man, I wish I would have tried, you know, so, so for any young poets uh, or aspiring or, you know, people who have a gift and they're looking to, to, to do that thing, do it, you mm. know, don't, don't live with regrets, you know, live in your purpose and go after it, no matter what anybody says, and a lot of times you have loved ones that'll say, do this and do that, and they're speaking from love, mm -hmm. they're speaking from their experience, but their experience isn't isn't your own, you know, yeah. so you have to follow your heart. You know? Wisdom from Jay <laughs> yeah. Ivy, Grammy Award winner. Thank yes, you, sir. brother. Yes, sir. I Thank appreciate you, you, Thank you man. man. You know what? You. Get your notebooks out and start writing, creating, building, making, producing, and fulfilling your destiny. You probably need to pay attention to the gifts that wake you up in the middle of the night. You may already have the answers to all of your challenges, but the first step is to know yourself. I want to say thanks to Jay Ivey for joining me at the Counterpoint. Call me, 844-777-9311. Tweet me at Gerard MC and comment on Facebook at Counterpoint Gerard. Stay positive. I need you to keep your head up and always be encouraged to voice your Counterpoint. Have a great week.